Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Hello and welcome. I'm Jeffrey Mishlove. Today we're going to look at meditative technologies. My guest, Dr. Robert Alexander, is a director and chief innovation officer at the University of Michigan and a specialist in looking at technologies that focus on the meditative process. Welcome, Robert. It's such a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be with you as well. I see uh, your face is still sparkling from the <laughs> festival <laughs> yeah. that brought you to Las Vegas. It was really such a tremendous opportunity to be able to share this technology that takes the breath and then uses that to guide meditative states. And I love to call it DJing and meditation mm -hmm. because what we have are various layers. I bring my music compositional background. So a couple decades and what it means to you know write string quartets or write electronic music, but then being able to then mix something whereby it's generative, it's coming from the breath. If you think about the original meditation from the Buddha, right? If you can follow your breath for an hour, you'll be enlightened. Mm -hmm. But this notion of then creating a score that nudges someone towards a more and more perpetually deeper relaxed state of awareness and consciousness. And so creating, let's say, a bell sound at the beginning and at the end of every breath. And so then guiding attention back with each bell and then supporting it as well with sounds from water, sounds from nature, low bass tones. And with each of these sounds, they have their own particular function when it comes to relaxation, when it comes to meditation, and really just letting someone get a deeper sense of peace and well-being. Mm -hmm. So you're looking largely at the auditory uh, sensibility. Uh, yeah, correct. I'm also working with uh, Bella Shaw at the University of Michigan. Um, so she's recently now starting a program where she'll be actually working with patients and we're actually going to do a longitudinal study saying when you get someone in the hospital, can we shorten their stay? You know, if you can't get out of the hospital mm -hmm. bed, um, you know, due to some mm -hmm. circumstance, let's say that you can use this device, just measures your breath mm -hmm. to then relax a little bit more. In hospitals, they're a very sterile environment. So I want to bring anything in terms of yeah. wellness and just, you know, focused meditation into that space. You're combining the, the physiological measurement, the biofeedback equipment with your experience as a composer and s somewhat of a DJ, I gather. Yeah, well actually, so I'm a sonification specialist and mm -hmm. I spent three years working at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center over the summer working closely with the scientists and taking the solar wind data stream, mm -hmm. turning it into sound, and then we listen to the subtle nuances in the sound, and we were actually able to discover quite a few new things about where the solar wind's coming from, things like ion cyclotron wave storms, mm -hmm. um, the prevalence of carbon versus oxygen versus helium, and then publish some new findings, because we actually realize the auditory sensorium, it's highly sensitive mm -hmm. when it comes to, you know, resolving something that may be subtle within the frequency spectrum, you know, even the air condition that we can hear now. Now, when it comes to machine learning, if you take, let's say, the cocktail party effect, when you have lots of people talking at the same time, so you get a little cacophony of voices, if you would take, let's say, a statistical signal processing algorithm and say, pick out this one voice among many, it's a very difficult problem right now to not just get the voice, but also the semantic context and everything that has to go with the nuance and the mm -hmm. emotion and the express. And even right now, as I'm getting a little more excited, you can hear all that in my voice. Yeah. And so what we're learning is that there's some subtle nuances in the sound that don't really come across through any other means currently. So you can graph, like let's say um, you have a favorite album or something. Mm -hmm. You could sit here and you could talk to me about it for a while, but pushing play is what really allows me to form my own opinion yeah. and to really get a, a qualitative sense of exactly what's going on in that mm -hmm. music. And then through listening to the scientific data, through just listening and basking in it, I often find that just by putting it on loop, mm -hmm. things will start to emerge. And it's that process then that we just start to pull out new things and new understandings. And mm -hmm. I'm now teaching other researchers to do a similar kind of thing. And it's really, it's an exploratory process, mm -hmm. which is a great way to think about emerging into a sort of new sense of scientific discovery rather than just confirming or exploring. Now my sense of a meditation is that it kind of goes in waves. You get mm -hmm. to a certain state and it takes you to a place and then you're there, and then like another wave might come along. Mm. 
take you a little Certainly. further. Uh, and I imagine that in, in your work, you're, it's sort of intuitive. You have to feel that when you're working with someone. <laughs> Certainly. So I've actually um, written a number of pieces of music mm -hmm. whereby I will go into a meditation. Mm -hmm. I will go into that spaciousness. And then just feeling the room, I'll feel like, okay, I, I think that there should be some sort of cloud of sound. And so then I'll build that generative mm -hmm. structure. And then I'll, I'll sit there with it for a while and I'll say, it feels like maybe there's some water that should emerge from this space. Then I'll build on the water, same thing with a bell, with some voices, some insects, some birds chirping. And then when I finally sit with it, maybe for an hour, and I just have a sense of it doesn't seem like anything else is necessary mm -hmm. here, then the piece is complete. And so there's that question of, you know, am I writing the music? Is the music then just like, is it being channeled from mm -hmm. somewhere else? There's the, the sense that... It's really just allowing consciousness to flow and yeah. supporting attention. Mm -hmm. And so going back to that notion, like I said, the ocean waves that each inhalation and exhalation can drive, mm -hmm. it brings you perpetually back to the breath state. And it's, it's so embodied and it feels organic. Some of the feedback that I've gotten over this past week, and it's just, it's been fantastic. Mm -hmm. And people saying like, oh, I feel like they said the word heaven, I was in heaven at the moment, mm -hmm. or, you know, it just felt so organic and embodied. And you forget the fact that there's a phone, that there's technological mediation driving this experience. And it just lets you feel like your breath now is the wind, it's the ocean waves. Mm -hmm. So you're suggesting, if I hear you right, that through the research you've done, you have enough knowledge about this process to take people's uh, physiological readings and use that to see where they are in the meditative process so that you know what input to give them to take them to the next level. Yeah, and having DJed hundreds of these meditations now, the uh -huh. next step is to then embed some knowledge directly into the system. Mm -hmm. So knowing that the low bass tone helps to generally anchor energy. Yeah. And also knowing that when I push some sounds that are way up the octave, mm -hmm. it can tend to bring the energy up. And so getting a sense for the physiological state of the individual mm -hmm. who's coming through that meditation, and then to be able to most comfortably bring them back to their breath, bring them back to awareness. So for instance, some people will come in really hot, so they may be you know, 30 breaths per minute near hyperventilation mm -hmm. and knowing that there's a certain set of sounds um, for instance if there's a certain melodic structure that's embedded within this piece of music it may not make sense to begin with that right away if they're coming in at that speed yeah. so then introducing it a little bit more slowly starting with some more textural pieces mm -hmm. just to bring the awareness back to the self mm -hmm. and then slowly bringing in these structures that start to say all right let's get down to 10 breaths per minute nine it's fun to just watch it drop mm -hmm. and to just be with the person in that experience and thinking about how we can automate some of this is also how we can start to push towards the creation of an app for distribution at large. I see. Well, I guess I, if I had to sum up what you, you do, it seems like you're doing three things at, at, at once. You're uh, uh, a high-tech spiritual DJ. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love that. Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, Robert, I would love to spend more time with you and to experience it. I hope you come back and we can do that. I know that you mm -hmm. have to get to the airport now, so I do. Uh, we're cutting this interview uh, shorter than our normal interviews, but this has been joyful. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming and for being available. Yeah, I appreciate it. And thank you for being with us. <laughs> Thank you.